Hey everyone! Welcome back to BioSpeaks, where we make biology simple and fun. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of food chains and food webs. Ever wondered how energy flows in an ecosystem? Let's break it down. So what exactly is a food chain? Think of it as a map that shows how energy flows from one living thing to another in an ecosystem. It's all about who eats whom, starting from the bottom with our. Producers are usually green plants or algae, and they are the first step in every food chain. They make their own food through photosynthesis. Imagine this food chain, the grass is our producer. Next up, we have the primary consumer, which is at the second trophic level. These are animals that eat the producers. In our example, a grasshopper munches on the grass. Moving up, we reach the secondary consumer, which eats the primary consumer. In this case, a frog eats the grasshopper. Then, at the fourth level, we have the tertiary consumer. Here, it's a snake that feeds on the frog. The snake is the predator, and the frog is its prey. Finally, at the top of our food chain, we have the quaternary consumer. This is also called an apex predator because it isn't eaten by anything else. In this example, the hawk is our quaternary consumer, and its prey is the snake. And just like that, we have a complete food chain. Energy flows from grass to grasshopper, to frog to snake, and finally to the hawk. But wait. Nature isn't as simple as a straight line, right? In reality, all the food chains in an ecosystem are connected, forming a complex food web. A food web shows how different food chains interact and overlap. Each organism occupies a specific place in the food chain, called a trophic level, but it often plays more than one role in the food web. Now, let's talk about what happens when things change in a food web. Nearly every species is dependent on others for survival, and if one species' population suddenly drops, it can create a ripple effect. For example, human activity is changing and damaging natural habitats, which can impact the entire ecosystem. When a species declines dramatically, it affects the organisms that rely on it for food or are part of its environment. This means that even a small change in the number of producers or consumers can lead to big changes in the entire food chain. That's why it's so important to protect our ecosystems and keep a balance in nature. And that's a wrap on today's video. We learned about food chains, how energy moves through different trophic levels, and the importance of food webs. Remember, every piece of the puzzle plays a crucial role in keeping ecosystems healthy and thriving. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to BioSpeaks for more fun biology content, and share it with your friends. Got any questions or suggestions for our next video? Drop them in the comments below.